Humans have existed on planet Earth for hundreds of thousands of years. We were all born here. And without getting too morbid, we're all going to die here. It's amazing that there's so much we don't know about this blue-green ball of ours. From exploding water to earthquakes that could crack this planet like an egg, it's one big crazy mystery we're still unraveling today. I'm Mike with List25, and here are 25 things you never knew about the Earth. 25. Deep sea life. There's deep sea life, and then there's deep, deep sea life. Living things exist under the sea floor on a microbial level. What does that mean? Well, it basically means we're talking about really, really small organisms. For example, in 2020, it was reported that scientists found a bunch of these organisms in rock samples taken from the South Pacific. They lived in the crevices of the rock and survived on methane. Yeah, methane. Areas such as these and the sunlight-free parts of the ocean known as the twilight zone ensure that experts have their work cut out exploring the depths of our planet. 24. Helpful clouds. Typically, I associate clouds with covering up the sun and dumping a ton of rain on me at precisely the wrong moment. However, did you know that clouds are actually helpful to the human race? Take them away, and we'd be 13 degrees Fahrenheit warmer. That's quite a leap. Now, if you live in a cold place, it doesn't really sound so bad. But if you're in a scorchingly hot location, then clouds are something to be thankful for. Plus, as you may have heard, increases in temperature aren't exactly the best thing for the planet right now. 23. So many microbes. I mentioned teeny tiny organisms a little earlier, which live at the microbial level. Microbes are everywhere. They're here in enormous numbers, as research has shown. Take soil, for instance. Let's say you've been out for a walk and there's some soil on the sole of your shoe. Brush that off and you may have enough for a teaspoonful. How many microbes do you think are in that little teaspoon? It's a billion. And within that billion are reported 10,000 species of organisms. Something to think about the next time you're at the park. 22. Sinking feeling. When you turn on your tap, the water you're enjoying comes from the ground. Groundwater is pumped out of the earth by humans for various reasons and the effects on our environment are dramatic. In certain cases, the landscape can subside due to the force water exerts on rock. Remove the water and things can go downhill. We can actually see the extent to which this is happening by looking down on the planet using satellites and such. We've observed that the axis of the earth has been altered because of the demand for groundwater. I never knew that. And to be honest, I'm not sure I wanted to know. It's scary stuff. 21. The Drift from Down Under The landmass of Earth is covered with tectonic plates. And if you don't know what these are, they form a series of rock layers, meaning that countries in different territories are sitting on epic slabs of rock that have a tendency to, you know, shift around. Nowhere is this more true, perhaps, than Australia. It was reported in 2016 that the country had moved several feet over the past couple of decades. Amazingly, this has given GPS a headache because it apparently can't keep track of all that shifting in the land down under. It may even collide with another place, like a huge and very slow moving bumper car. 20. Yellowstone Volcano Fans of the TV series, or those who simply enjoy visiting national parks, will be interested to know that Yellowstone has its very own volcano. The park features what's known as a caldera, or a crater-like depression made when the Earth went pop hundreds of thousands of years ago. This geological pockmark is reportedly 44 miles wide. That's a whole lot of lava. And there's a lot more still there under the ground, resulting in hot springs and geysers. Should you be worried about an eruption at Yellowstone? Well, probably not, as it's been quiet for a long, long time. Though, I'd suggest bringing your running shoes next time you visit. And do visit, Yellowstone is gorgeous. I have been there, it is beautiful. I will admit, Old Faithful, a little smaller than I thought it'd be, still really cool. 19, Wu Da Forest. Over in China, experts marveled over an ancient forest that was preserved thanks to the devastating eruption of a volcano. Such eruptions can cause chaos, but one intriguing thing they do is bury the past in great condition. We've seen it in Pompeii, and now here in the Wu Da Forest, which was uncovered beneath a carpet of volcanic ash after centuries in 2012. Located under a coal mine in Inner Mongolia, it's believed to be approximately 300 million years old and gives a glimpse of what the planet was like back in the days when our continents hadn't broken apart and formed separate territories. 
The plant life dates back to the Permian period, or Paleozoic era. Discoveries included extinct examples of trees and leaves on branches. 18. Ribbit Rain You might be aware of scenes in movies and TV where the sky rains frogs. This isn't some crazy thing that they made up. There are recorded cases of amphibians plummeting from the clouds and creating pandemonium for unsuspecting people. Well, where do the frogs come from? It isn't a weird wormhole or anything like that, but a natural phenomenon. The theory goes that extreme weather conditions can gather up whatever lays in their path and deposit these things elsewhere. Something like a tornado can collect roof tiles, a car, and apparently an army of frogs. As long as it doesn't pick up any sharks, I, I think we're fine. 17. Where oxygen comes from. One of the strangest things of all planet Earth is how little we know about really basic stuff. Can you believe that after all these centuries, experts still scratch their heads over the stuff we take into our lungs? Oxygen is essential to life on Earth, but it moves in mysterious ways. The origin of oxygen as a thing lies with microorganisms known as cyanobacteria. That's just a fancy word for algae, by the way. Just as we humans release carbon dioxide as we breathe out, this algae released a lot of oxygen approximately two and a half billion years back, which went up into the atmosphere. Experts have noted that it took a while after this for the oxygen to reach a breathable level. That said, they aren't sure what ultimately led us to having this handy atmosphere which we all rely on to breathe. 16. Supercontinents Remember when I talked about the Wuda forest and how it dated back to a time when the continents were all joined together? That brings me to supercontinents. Specifically, an enormous mass of land called Pangaea that existed some 350 million years ago, according to scientists. When Pangaea developed what's described as a three-pronged fissure, giving birth to what we now know as America and Africa, it was only a matter of time before it broke into more pieces. One supercontinent became two, and then a few continents. Pangaea wasn't the first supercontinent, but who knows? Maybe it won't be the last, though we'll probably never see it in our lifetimes. 15. Wet and dry. A desert is somewhere you think of as being dry and remote, and they don't come much drier than the Atacama Desert. Situated in northern Chile, even a picture of it makes me want a glass of water. It's thought to be the driest area on the planet. The parched landscape was treated to a couple of storms in 2015 and 2017, but something like that hadn't happened in around 500 years. So there isn't a drop of liquid to be seen for miles, right? Wrong. While you wouldn't want to be stuck out there, the Atacama Desert is in fact next door to the Pacific Ocean. This means that the driest place in the world is neighbors with the biggest and wettest water mass on Earth. 14. Orbiting Bodies We all know about the man in the moon. At least I hope we do, because I'm going to feel really old otherwise. But anyway, it looks like the man in the moon has a couple of crazy siblings that I didn't know about. In addition to the thing wolves howl at that we're all familiar with, there are two other objects which are in close proximity to us, at, at least in cosmic terms. The casually titled 3753 Frenya sticks pretty close to Earth's orbit around the sun. Meanwhile, asteroid 2002 AA29 comes and says hello every century or so, appearing in the sky at a distance of approximately 4 million miles. Wave hello to the nice asteroid as it goes by, kids. Hello. 13. Ball lightning. We're familiar with the spectacle of lightning streaks, but lightning in a ball? It exists. How does lightning even scrunch into a ball in the first place? That's the staggering thing. We don't really know. There are various theories out there involving plasma bubbles and air vortexes, but experts are kind of stumped on the details. One of the craziest things about ball lightning is that it doesn't always stay outside. People have actually witnessed it flying into their homes through a window. They're just all Kamehameha's. Although that's a beam. Dead, forget I said that. Kamehameha is a beam. It's just a ball part <laughs> till, they, till they make it a beam. 12. Tetra Neutrons. Scientists have discovered their fair share of incredible things over the centuries. In this respect, planet Earth is the gift that keeps on giving. In the early years of the 21st century, the hunt was on for what are called tetra neutrons. Experts thought they existed, but it was only a theory. What are tetra neutrons? They're nuclear clusters which have four neutrons and no protons. Neutrons and protons are particles that exist on a subatomic level. 
or they're smaller than an atom, in other words. Why are these tetraneutrons so important? Because for a long time, they were a vital missing link in how experts understand nuclei and their workings. In 2002, scientists discovered signs that tetraneutrons were more than a theory. It took another 21 years to actually find one. Amazing how something as long established as nuclear power is still being explored and researched by our finest minds, isn't it? 11. Spare Tire Effect It's a reassuring thought for middle-aged people everywhere that they're not the only ones who carry a bit of extra weight around. Turns out the Earth has its own version of a spare tire running right down the middle. The reason for this is, well, down to gravity. Just as gravity has an unfortunate effect on those with more generous proportions, so it affects a planet like the Earth. It exerts so much pressure on land and water on the surface that this forms a distinct bulge at the equator. If you've just eaten another bag of chips, you can hopefully feel a little less guilty now. It's okay, I was really fat once. So. 10. Mother Nature, the Recycler. If you get aggravated at your local authority telling you to recycle your plastics and such, then spare a thought for Mother Nature. She's been recycling the very ground you walk on since time immortal. It truly is the circle of life, or to be more precise, magma. Hard rock starts off as magma, and it tends to wind up as magma also. This is due to the routine it goes through, where magma deep underground rises to the surface. Here it cools and becomes rock. Going back to those tectonic plates we mentioned, although that was paper, hang on, it becomes rock. <laughs> Going back to those tectonic plates we mentioned earlier in the video, rock is subject to wear and tear. Igneous rock shavings come loose and sink back to the earth where pressure turns them into sedimentary rocks. And as the tectonic plates grind together and the plates slide under one another, that exposes the sedimentary rock underground to the fiery core of the planet. So rock is liquefied back into piping hot magma, ready to go back to the surface all over again. Rinse and repeat. 9. The Core and the Sun As I just said, planet Earth is more than a little toasty at the core. How hot is it exactly? Well, it's thought to be in the region of 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is an interesting coincidence because that is the same temperature you'll find on the Sun. Think about it. The insides of the Earth are as flaming hot as the Sun's surface. That is one heck of a furnace we're packing down there. 8. Our Name the name Earth has been used in connection with our planet for centuries. It makes sense. I mean, the surface is covered with soil and what have you, so why not call it Earth? The trouble is, we don't know who came up with the name in the first place. I'm surprised to hear this is a mystery, aren't you? Because while you can trace the word to Old English sources, as in the earliest version of the English language, not to mention High Germanic, it hasn't been established which wordsmith was ultimately responsible for calling it Earth. I'll take credit, it's fine, I'll just, me. Did you write me, Earth, Mike, 2023. 2024, damn it! <laughs> Seven, epic earthquake. Earthquakes cause major destruction and death. You don't, you don't have to be a scientist to work that out. However, how bad can an earthquake get? Well, I said at the beginning of this video that an earthquake might be so powerful that it could break the planet in half, and I wasn't kidding around. This is something that may happen should a quake measuring a ground trembling magnitude of 12 on the Richter scale take place. Thankfully, the highest they go appears to be 9.5, so no need to plan your escape just yet. 6. Viruses vs. Stars How does this work? By looking at the numbers, if you tally up all the known viruses on the planet, you reach a staggering figure of 10 nonillion. Did you even know what a nonillion was before you watched this video? Yeah, me neither. It's a number equal to one with as many as 54 zeros after it. The number of zeros it has depends on where you are in the world. It is that crazy. Anyway, the upshot is that 10 nonillion viruses outstrips the number of stars in our sky. Not just our skies, but the entire universe. On a scale of one to 10, how freaked out are you right now? Let us know in the comments below. Five, why so much water? Earth is described as a blue-green planet, but let's face it, it's mainly blue. Water makes up no less than 70% of our surface, and as I said before, there are a bunch of life forms down there that we have little to no idea about. As for the enormous quantities of water, well, the jury is also very much out. Popular thinking is that ice-laden asteroids struck our planet and the water melted, arriving that way. 4. 
longer days. As we're all aware, a day on Earth lasts 24 hours. Was this always the case? Absolutely not. In fact, go back 620 million years and you would have experienced a day running approximately 22 hours. Go back 4.6 billion years and you'd be lucky to get six. It seems the reason for this lies in the rotation of the Earth. Our rotation is controlled by forces in the moon and tides that hold it back little by little. This results in a delay of approximately two milliseconds every century. That's right, I said every hundred years. So you will be relieved to hear that there's no extra long work days on the horizon for you. Three, smart slime. This is a particularly cool entry because I get to make a reference to Ghostbusters. I love the first movie. The second, uh, not so much, but though it does feature an interesting plot element, which is sentient slime. Is this some far out idea dreamt up by the script writers? No, you can indeed find slime that shows signs of intelligence, specifically slime mold. Get enough slime mold cells together and you end up with something that appears to act like a brain. Think I may have lost the plot? All the proof is in the pudding. The slimy, slimy pudding. This mold can detect food, use memory, and share information. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Slime mold wrote the script for this video. I'm kidding, it didn't. Also, I like Ghostbusters too. So damn you slime mold for making me say I didn't like it. The one is still better, but two is great. I like two. Two, rocking out. Geologists were probably more than a little surprised when rocks appeared to move by themselves on a Death Valley lake bed. I'm not sure whether you'd see much if you chose to sit down and watch. However, these huge and heavy objects slid their way across the scorched surface in a dramatic and bizarre fashion. What's going on here? There isn't a definitive explanation, but one theory is that ice can form on the rocks. The ice melts and the moisture then reacts with the wind to create a kind of natural slalom effect. One, exploding lakes. There's nothing like a nice relaxing day strolling by the lake. Of course, you may not have a lake in your vicinity and after hearing about our final fact, you might be grateful. You see, lakes are capable of exploding. The reason it happens is due to primal forces beneath our feet. We've looked at stuff like magma and the pressures that can build up under the ground. Such pressures can cause havoc underwater also. Take the lakes of Nyos, Manon, and Kivu, for example. Located in Central Africa, these particular bodies of water pack a deadly punch. Volcanic magma under the lake bed releases carbon dioxide. This seeps into the wet stuff from below. If it suddenly decides to release itself from that water, the results can be explosive. The large amount of carbon dioxide meeting the air leads to people being unable to breathe. While an exploding lake sounds wild and comedic, the reality of it is all too terrible. So, what's your favorite thing about our blue and green marble? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and check out our social medias, including my personal ones, links in that description. And do you wanna know even more? Well, then we have another video containing a fresh rundown of 25 shocking facts for you right here. Click on the link and I'll see you soon for another list right here. Just click it just somewhere. I'm probably stroking it. Oh, don't say that. It's right here. I just let's watch the video together. I'll present it. You watch. It's getting worse by the second.